You know, the way I see it is um, I don't give a f about what anybody else thinks. Um, and I'm not doing any of this for anybody else. I'm doing it for me. And if anyone's lines are getting crossed, that's on them. That's their f business. I do this for me and I do this to make me happy and this is what I want to look like and if this is what I want to look like, it's what I want to look like and you can just deal with it. Um, it's not about anything else. It's just me. Hi, I'm Caroline. I'm 31. I'm from Brooklyn. I grew up in Carroll Gardens, like Cobble Hill in the 90s. Don't really have much else to say about growing up in New York other than it was like the best thing I could ever think of for a child. There was just so much, so many different things to see all the time. There's a lot going on, a lot to look at. One thing I remember really clearly growing up um, is uh, my mom had a lot of Keith Haring art in the house and we would see a lot of it like outside on the street. So that was cool to like grow up and he's like iconic and that's why I have a Keith Haring tattoo um, because he reminds me of being a kid and it was just like a different, pre 9-11 New York is a very different New York. Um, and I miss it. It just kind of seemed like there were different tensions, but not the constant like anxiety. And I just feel like I'm clenched all the time here now. I feel like the city is changing to fit an idealized version of it that just does not exist. Like it's a version of New York that people made up. And now that it doesn't match like their delusion, they're just like changing it up to fit some that they made up. I grew up with my, just my mom and we were um, we were poor so we'd have to find ways to entertain me in the city that didn't involve like spending a lot of money or anything so sometimes we would like get a bunch of like really cheap acrylic paints and we would just paint each other and like I don't know we would just like do a bunch of weird shit like that so there's a ton of pictures of me as a kid like where I have I'm like holding up a my hands and I've like painted my own hands and my arms and my face and my chest. Like I'm just like covered head to toe in all these weird little paint designs. So I don't think I, there was ever a moment where I was like, I'm gonna get tattooed. It was more like I am regularly decorating myself anyway. And it just kind of seemed like a natural progression from like painting my body with paint to just getting it done permanently. <laughs> My dad had tattoos. He was the first person I remember having tattoos. There's pictures of me the day I was born, him being the first person to hold me. You can see his little shitty tattoos in them. It was a Star of David on one forearm, like right in the middle, and that was it. And then on the other forearm, it was an onk. And he was ambidextrous, so he had like done it to himself. Um, but they were so old and shitty that the onk still looked like an onk because it's kind of an unmistakable shape. But the Star of David was so like blown out and old and like just up from years of like sun damage and all this other that he got up to that it, I thought it was a flower. And I didn't, I didn't know that it was a Star of David until he told me it was. And I was like, I must have been a teenager by the time he told me that. My first tattoo was this one. And it was the last night of Hanukkah in 2009 in Fort Lauderdale, Florida and I had gone to visit my dad because he moved down there. And he turns to me and he said, and he was just like, it was his idea. He goes, do you want to go get a tattoo? And I was like, mm, yes, I do. I, and we just went to this little, like it was like off the side of the highway in like a weird little, like, like underpass part of the highway with like those gross neon lights out front, it looked very, very seedy. And we went in there and I'm, I'm like, 16 and um, I don't know, I guess you can just do whatever the fuck you want in Florida because I went and got a tattoo that night. Like a couple of years prior to that, my dad had a really bad stroke and he had to forcibly retire. Um, and he kind of like changed after that. Um, sorry. Uh, he just became very different and I was really struggling. And I guess I'm just like trying to make sense of things. I was just like, well, I bet maybe I could like understand like things that I know for a fact are true. So I was reading a lot of Carl Sagan. That's <laughs> why so I read Cosmos a whole bunch. And it was like, he made all the really complex, unknowable things about the universe, like make sense in like a layman's sort of a way. 
and it really helped me uh, appreciate just how brief life is and how small we all are, but how everything still matters in spite of that. And it helped me like kind of just remember my place in a cosmic sense of things. Really lighthearted for a 16 year old. <laughs> my second tattoo was done by a man named Mad Dog in uh, the back of a head shop on St. Mark's Place. And it's this little spade. I was like, okay, do the other hand. And I got Mad Dog again. Little diamond right there, which you can't even tell what it is. And then just from there, I was like, oh, so I could get tattooed underage. Once I figured that out, it was just like, I would go after school and get tattoos. And then for my, I think on my, actually on my 18th birthday, I got my back done with um, a vaguely Native American motif, which uh, in hindsight was super cringy of me as a white lady. So I covered it up, baby, with a big old black circle, cause that's like the easiest way to obliterate that. Just cover it up. And I really like the look of um, black and shit out. It's like extreme to a different degree. And I like that. Obviously there's a certain level of curiosity because, you know, it's, like I said, a bit on the extreme side of things. But I, my chest was pretty heavily tattooed before I even blacked it out. So I kind of tune that shit out now because I'm a heavily tattooed woman. I live in New York. I hear stupid shit all the time. So I'm kind of blocking it all out at this point. Um, and I, again, don't really care about other people's visceral reactions to me, unless it's good. <laughs> when I got my face tattooed, it was actually to celebrate my 30th birthday. Not to get, get too uh, grim and depressing again, but I honestly never really imagined myself as an adult because I never thought I'd make it here. I wanted to do something to celebrate myself being alive, making it here. Uh, I did it. <laughs> Couple months prior, I was going on a Bender, capital B, and um, I got my face completely smashed in at a show. I like, I, I'm pretty sure I broke something here because I had a black eye for like a month. And um, shortly afterwards is when I was like, oh, I need to get my shit together and you know, got sober and all of that. So that was also like partially to celebrate that because this is like, literally exactly the spot where I got kicked in the fucking face or whatever happened. Um, Cause I don't really remember. Uh, but after that I got, a tattoo on my face for my 31st birthday. And it's it's a sword. And um, it's obviously larger than the other one because this year, you know, like every, when I turned 30, it was kind of like, cool, did it, landmark. But every everyone after that, that doesn't end in like a five or a zero, I'm like, I'm already finding it hard to give a shit. Uh, but you know, obviously it's a milestone and I want to celebrate another year of making it, I guess. And also it's a sword because I love Slayer. There's definitely a few I would just never would have gotten because I feel like some of them were like coping mechanisms in a weird way for being like just a lost young girl that didn't really have much direction. And so I would just coped by like getting a fucking tattoo, you know, like the sometimes when something hurts emotionally, it doesn't feel real until you feel it like physically. So I compensated sometimes by getting tattooed because, you know, it's just like, what can I do? What can I do? I feel so out of control. Like, I can control this. So get a tattoo. Sometimes I do regret the tattoos that I have underneath this one. I do not regret this blast over. I fucking love this thing. I look, I think it looks sick. I love it. I'm like an optical illusion. Whatever. I love it. I probably could have done with having this done without having what was under it done first. But I do like the idea of doing a blast over where you can see existing work underneath because people are always like, oh, tattoos, that's permanent, you know, that's permanent. And like, yeah, sure, but I can still have like a new start with anything, even something that's so permanent, like a massive tattoo on my chest. I can still do something different with that. Um, I do wish that I had thought a little bit more about what I got 
before I got this, but nothing I can do about it, so, <laughs> oh well. <laughs> um, and the other ones I would get rid of, probably this thing, because, oh my god, uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers tattoo that I got in the two, uh, 2010s. What the hell was I thinking? I was trying to hide it for a while, and then if anyone did clock it, I would tell them I was an EMT. Uh, uh, thankfully, never had to do anything about that, because, man, that would have been a nightmare. <laughs>